For this tutorial, we will walk you through all the features of the new design advice for the product design extension. With the full release of design advice, Fusion 360 now has a true end-to-end -end manufacturing aware plastic part solution. Let's see how it works. First, open a 3D design in Fusion 360 with a plastic component. This is a key step as all the analysis from design advice uses the rules you set up at the beginning of your design. Now that you have created your plastic part, simply select Design Advice in the Plastics tab to get started. First, select the component you want to analyze. Now select the pull direction. For those new to plastic injection molding, the pull direction is the direction the tool will move after the plastic has been injected into it. Once you have both component and direction picked, select Analyze. The Fusion 360 dialog now has an overview of the areas you should review to ensure this part can be manufactured. To see the values this tool is using to analyze the part, you can hover over the plastics rule in the browser. Here you can see I have a thickness of 0.8 to 3 millimeters, a thickness variation of 0.375 millimeters, a minimum draft angle of 0.5 degrees, and a knife edge threshold of 1 millimeter. Now that we know what it's checking for, let's select the Thickness tab to see some of the details. Here you can see the rule it is checking for again. You can also see that we have highlighted the areas of concern in the graphics window. The Thickness tab checks for all three types of thickness issues. Large thickness variations, walls that are too thin, and walls that are too thick. The first issue it shows is large thickness variations. If you would like to find walls that are too thick or too thin, you can switch what it is showing here in the alert type. Scrolling down, we see all of the regions it has found and the thickness variations in each. If you hover over a region in the dialog, you will see a cross highlight in the graphics window. Here you can also select the isolate button. This gives you a clearer picture of the area you need to analyze. To determine what to do about this alert, you can scroll down to see some recommendations. Here is one of the most powerful sections of design advice and is useful to those just starting out in plastics design as well as those with many years of industry experience. Here we see multiple methods for addressing large variations in thickness in simple and easy to consume recommendations. There are also links to more in-depth concepts so a new user can learn more about plastic design. Next, let's look at undercuts. As soon as you switch tabs, the graphics window updates to show the new areas of interest that you will need to look at. Here too, we have recommendations on what you can do. Notice that one of the recommendations is to talk with the manufacturer about whether this feature can be made with sliders or lifters. Here again, we see that there is no one-size-fits-all solution, and design advice gives you multiple ways to solve these manufacturing issues. Now if you do decide to go with the slider or lifter and don't want to see the alert for this area anymore, you can select the region and select ignore on the right hand side. The next two tabs, draft and knife edge, have very similar functionality. You can see where there are areas of concern as well as recommendations on what to do about these areas. Now let's look at two ways of addressing these design issues. Here you can see we have an area that would create a knife edge in our tool. For those new to plastic injection molding, a knife edge is a term used for a feature on the tool that is thin and long. This can be caused by a number of features on your part, but particularly if you have two features close together. This is problematic as it can cause the tool to wear prematurely. Here you can see we have identified an area where a knife edge could occur in the tool. The first method we use to fix this issue is to add a radius to this edge. This increases the spacing between this edge and the boss next to it. Now if we analyze this part again, you can see many of the regions have been removed, but we still have two that we want to address. Another method would be to go into the plastic rule and change the knife edge threshold. This should typically be done with the help of the manufacturer who will be creating this tool. Now you know how to use the new design advice in Fusion 360. If this tutorial was helpful to you, please like and subscribe to our channel.